Hi, it's John from Android Alex with a quick unboxing and setup of the Dragon Slade Titan controller. Now this is also known as the GLAP Play controller in the US. And you can see here, it's the exact same controller. We have the GLAP uh, logo there. But in the UK, it's been branded and sold by Dragon Slay under the name Titan. So it's the exact same controller, but under a different, slightly different name. So here we can see on the side uh, what we get. We get the controller, we get a travel case, Type-C USB cable, sticker and guide. Now the sticker and guide actually came in this uh, rather lovely plastic bag here. So let's have a quick look. So these are the stickers we get here. We get a little uh, welcome card here with some different details, and we get the the welcome guide. So let's just have a look at the back of the box here. Ergonomic design, premium materials, up to ten hours of gaming, and Steam Link compatible. This will be Galaxy Play Link compatible once that has been released on more than just the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. But until then, we have Steam Link, which is still good. So the side of the box just gives a few more details regarding the actual uh, spec. The controller, nothing on the bottom, nothing exciting anyway. Uh, manufactured this February, and nothing on the top. So let's get into this. Okay, and as we can see here, this is actually uh, what you would see in America when you buy it. So here we get this lovely little sleeve on top, and this is what is inside. So like I said, it's the Clap Play P1 designed for Samsung. Obviously it works on any phone, any Android phone. And we've got potentially some more stickers. We've got a bit more information on the back here. more information on the side and that's that so let's get into this one as well we've got that one's already open so let's just go into here okay we need to uh, buff up here it's saying Okay, so this is the carry case that comes with the controller. It's a hard shell case. Looks pretty, pretty sturdy. You're certainly not going to get your phone crushed if it's inside here with the controller. And this is the inside of the case. We've got it secured down here so we can see it's not going to come out of there but it's strapped in which is nice and secure. We've got the play guide. And we've got some more stickers. So we actually end up in the UK with all of these stickers, which is quite nice. Let's pop those down there. And this is the quick start guide. Ah, we do have some English here on the top here, so we'll just have a quick look at that. Okay, so let's get the actual controller out. Initial feeling, oh, I was gonna say the triggers feel a bit funny, but that's because they've got uh, some plastic on, so we'll remove that shortly. We'll just get this little box out which contains a USB-C charging cable. Uh, 
Okay, so this will actually go into the bottom side of the controller here and charge up with five volts. So if you're gonna plug it into a uh, USB plug, make sure that it's either five volt compatible uh, before you do so, uh, because if you don't, you might actually fry your poor little GLAP controller here. So as a quick example here, we can see that the uh, Samsung charger does run at five volts as well as nine volts, so it will step down and safely charge your GLAP if you so need to. But do double check that your charger uh, does say five volts, because if not, you could damage your controller. And seeing as the price is reasonably high, you probably don't want to do that. Okay, so there's the analog trigger buttons. The RB and LB buttons, or R1 and L1 as they're called. We've got analog sticks, which do have a click as well. D-pad doesn't feel too bad. And the Xbox, I mean, sorry, the GLAP, A, B, X and Y buttons feel reasonable enough. We have a home, power button, a play, and a menu button here. And the mechanism on the back to close the GLAP is here, so if we push that to the side, we can now open this up. It stays open once you pop it out until you press this again. Oh. And as you can see, it is quite a strong little spring inside here. I wouldn't want to do this too many times, to be honest, because uh, I'm not sure how long that's going to last for, but it uh, feels quite steady. Uh, you don't actually need to pull that across to open the clap up. You can just do that by pulling to the side. And then once you've got your phone in here, I would slowly close it up. We have a little caution sticker here with this poor person's finger trapped in. So we're going to take that off as we know not to stick our fingers inside the device. Okay, so how does this feel in comparison to say an Xbox One controller? Now, as you can see, the button layout is, let's just say, exactly the same which is good in my opinion because I'm used to you know, knowing where A, B, X and Y are. The right analog stick is in a slightly strange position, I'd say, in comparison um, to the Xbox controller. But naturally, my hands, you know, they're, they're going up there and that's fine. I'm not struggling at all. I do like the Xbox One controller having the analog down here because I can quickly go back and forwards like that. But instead, from this, I will just need to go back some forwards like that. Now, the D-pad. This is something that Microsoft really did well uh, with the Xbox One controller. As you can hear, this is a really fantastic D-pad, which is great. Now, this uh, GLAP controller one doesn't feel quite as good. It's not as clicky. We like to have a bit of click in our D-pads. But it's a pretty good effort, I'd say. I think that's going to be absolutely fine. We will do a controller test shortly and find out to make sure it's getting all of its coordinates correctly. The analog sticks. Again, this is very, very similar to the Xbox One controller stick. I would say Apart from the fact this is now, what, six years old, this feels quite loose, a bit, oh sorry, feels a bit looser than the Xbox controller. Not a huge amount, but I think you're going to be able to get enough precision from this when you're playing games, especially on a phone. I mean, the accuracy on a phone isn't quite as high as it would be on a console. Now, the position of these bumper buttons, I think that's fine. 
Um, if you're going to play something like Rocket League, for example, I'm always using my middle finger for the accelerate and the first index finger as the boost. So I think that's an okay position. I'm used to holding my Xbox One controller like that when I'm playing certain games. So I've got no problem at all with doing that on the glap. I think I'd have preferred maybe the D-pad to be slightly lower and the analog stick here. And I could have I could have left, you know, it's fine up here on the right hand side, but I think a bit lower maybe on the left would have been nice. Other than that, yeah, it all feels good. It's not too heavy, reasonably light. It's about 268 grams, I believe, according to the instructions. We'll just have a look at the back. We've got this nice textured plastic here. Now this will help you when you're in the middle of a Fortnite battle and you're frantically trying to build up your base to avoid getting killed because it will stop your hands slipping all over the place. Now in fact, funnily enough, the Xbox controller doesn't have this texture at all and it's quite slippery when you're in a heated battle. So that's quite a good plus for the glap here. The triggers don't go down too far. Let's again just con compare that. So you can see side by side, there's definitely less play on the glap. But then not all games do support analog triggers on Android because obviously the touchscreen is on or off. But I do know that there are some racing games that do support that, so it'll be interesting to see how accurate you can be with those sticks. Now the RB button, or R1 as it's called here, I don't I hate the one on the Xbox One controller, it's awful. The Xbox 360 one was much easier to press. Although over the years it has gotten a bit easier and a bit softer, initially it's really stiff and horrible. So this is a bit clicky, it doesn't feel as solid, and it does make quite a bit of noise. But yeah, we'll give it a try and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so on the inside of the glap here we have the sort of rubberized, textured a piece here on either side actually. This will be to protect your phone when you put it in because obviously you don't want to put your phone against hard plastic because it'll get scratched and damaged. So without further ado let me get my phone and we will try putting it in and see how it looks. Okay so first I'm actually going to try it with my case on. Now I've got the LED case here so it's very very thin so this shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, I understand you can actually use pretty much any case on the uh, S10 and S10 Plus and it should work. But we're going to just pop this in, so we're going to open up the glap here and we're going to pop it in like so. Now there is a bit of a ridge here at the bottom, if you can see that. So you can see you've got something to lean your phone against and I'd say obviously when you press the button it should centralise itself quite nicely. So let's give that a go. Okay, so that's in. Going against the bottom. Feels pretty solid. It's not causing any problems. I can see the whole of the screen as it's not being taken up or taken over, sorry, by these little sticking out pieces of plastic here. So that's good. I will try it without the case on as well, just so you can get a bit of a feel as to what it's like. Okay, here's my naked S10 Plus. So we're going to pop that in, again we're going to rest it against the bottom here and then we're just going to press the button and we're going to just let it slowly close up. Now I think I'm going to just yeah, level it out, that's fine. So yeah, it's still, I'd say it's not covering up the screen. Let's have a look, if I can unlock it. Yeah, so you can see here, there's plenty of room here and it's all looking good, so that's great. Okay, so let's pair this phone up with the GLAP controller and we're gonna do a few tests to make sure it actually works properly. So we can see the device has shown up 
there's Glap Play P1, so we'll just click on there. And we're connected. Okay, we should now be able to use the uh, buttons here to navigate around. I'm only going to press it once, you already know the deal with that. So let's go into the Gamepad Tester here, and we're just going to test the functions of each uh, component to make sure that they're working properly. So let's test the actual axes first. Close this add off. Okay, so when we're testing the axis of the controller, we should be able to draw a complete circle and not get any sort of dead spots or dead zones between the line that we draw. So let's give that a try. We'll try first with the left and long stick. I'm just gonna to go to the left. I'm just gonna turn around. We can see here, it's looking quite good. So you should, in theory, be able to actually completely draw green all over this. Now, you can see how steady my hand is. It's probably because I'm trying to look through a camera whilst I do this. But the main um, focus is really to see whether we get any gaps when we're moving the analog stick. And this, I would say, that is passing the test which means you can be nice and accurate in your games. So that's the left controller, that's passed. I'm quite happy with that. So we're gonna move on to the right one now. So we're gonna just do the same again. Yeah. This all looks fine to me. So I'll just go down. Yeah, and you could colour in all this if you really wanted to, but uh, I really haven't got time. So that's all looking good. This is the brake. This so this is the actual left trigger here. So to, to prove that it is analog, we should be able to yeah very slowly increase and decrease with the amount of pressure we are applying here. It's, good. it's hard to show you how far it's going down and so you can see the screen at the same time. But I would say that's working fine. And now we'll go to the gas, as the Americans would say, or the accelerator pedal. And again, it's working fine. So we can see how many levels if I very slowly lift it off here. Okay, I think that is all we can do on this page. So we're just gonna to go to test gamepad now. And as we do things, it will show up in the list here of things that we're testing. So let's just test the D-pad. So we've got Y, X. So we've got up and down. We've got right and left. That's working. We've got, so here we go, we've got the diagonal right and down. We should have right and up and then right and left. Uh, sorry, left and up and then left and down. So that's all working good. So we've got a full circle here, which is great. We've got our buttons here, so let's give the A button a try. Got the A button. There's no pressure sensitivity at all on here, so it's just on or off. X looks to be working fine. Y and B. So that's all working great. We can press them all at the same time. So it's all working fine. And we're just going to test the click of the right analog stick. We've got that one button. Thumber, as it's called. Uh, oh, sorry, thumb R for right. And we've got the thumb left working as well. We've got the R1 button, L1 button, we've got all the axes showing up at the bottom still. Now I'm going to try these buttons here, I don't know if they're going to actually come out of the app, but uh, let's give it a try. And then we've got the start button here, 
we've got the select button here. That's the power button, so I probably don't want to press that one. And this is the home button, which will take me back to the home. Okay, so everything's working, which is great. We're quite happy that everything is showing up as it should do and functioning well. So that's Gamepad Tester. It's free in the App Store. It's worth getting when you buy a controller just to make sure everything's functioning properly. So I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video. If you did, please click like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do some gameplay recording now in a separate video, so I'll put a link to that in the description once it's ready to go. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you've got any suggestions of which games to try, uh, these are the ones I've currently got installed, but if you've got any that you think I should give a go, let me know. But until then, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.